I saw so many of them fail, but I had managed to survive. And that, to me, was a source of pride. Over time, as this new solution, these classes that are called the Warren Bentley classes grew, over time, we began to hire more people. Eventually, we hired a COO. And the first thing that I learned when I hired the CEO that this was that this achievement, this thing that I worked so hard on, that I was so proud of, that I that was to me was like a really just the pinnacle of my life's work to that point. When my masterpiece is an educator. The first thing I learned was that every single part of everything I was doing was wrong. That all the things that I thought were so brilliant weren't achieving the goals that they were supposed to achieve. That there was clear and obvious problems, and the list of problems was as long as the entire room. This wasn't, we're not talking about occasional small issues, it was every single thing. And that was hard to hear. It was really hard for to hear because it was something that I had, that was so much of my own uh, like maturing experience. That's where I, in the process of creating this thing called the board, but this is how I felt, that's how I had become who I was. And when I heard this message that said that this whole system has problems here and here and here and this other place what i heard was that you have problems that you're not that good that you have things that you need to work on by saying that this thing i poured my heart and soul into was just okay and needed to be fixed i heard that i was the same way i was a very difficult message to hear. And for a long time, I didn't hear that message at all. I simply refused to listen. Fortunately for me, I had two things going for me. One, one of the first, you know, when I was young and started my business, one of my first rules of business was that I was always going to listen to criticism. And I was always going to take the criticism seriously and use it to improve. And the other thing that was also beneficial is the CEO that I hired that was very, very persistent. When I look back today on what on the achievement that I was so proud of, when I look back today on what I was doing in you know 2012, 2013, I consider that to be ridiculous. I can look at those methods and say, I can't even believe we use those methods. Those methods are silly. Those aren't good methods. You see, in the first place, I would, what, the problem was that I had stopped even looking to do what was important. What was important was I was supposed to be trying to make the best education possible. But psychologically, I stopped doing that. Instead of trying to make the best education possible, I'd fallen into this common trap. I started to believe that my job was to convince everyone else that the thing I was already doing was the best education possible. Instead of searching for the best thing, I was working to convince people that the current thing that I was already doing was the best thing. The more closely attached we are to a thing, the more a thing is part of our upbringing, the more a thing is part of our maturing process, the more a thing is part of the times in life where we become who we are, the more sentimentally attached we become to a thing. And sometimes that sentimentalism can be good, but a lot of times that sentimentalism can be very dangerous.